Acts the 12th chapter and the 5th verse. Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ, the 12th chapter and the 5th verse. Amen. You have to say amen? Amen. amen. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayers were being made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, Peter was locked up in prison, but prayers were being made for him without Peter. is locked up in prison, but prayers, some of them, let me say it one more time. Peter is locked up in prison, but prayers were being made for him continually. Uh, for a few moments, this is our last Sunday in our prayer series. Uh, I want to teach and preach using as a thought or theme, what can prayer do for you? What can prayer do for you? Father, we come this morning, we thank you, we give you glory, give you honor and praise for there is none like you. Father, we have searched all over, and our searching is totally in vain, you brought us back to you. No one can love us and hold us and heal us like you can. Father, I have one request this morning, put past behind the cross. No flesh will ever glory in your sight. Lord, my words are empty and impotent and incomplete. Speak through me as I speak to your people right now. It's for the revelation as you give your people the illumination. In Jesus' name we pray. Every child of God said, amen. Elbow your neighbor and tell them what can prayer do for you. The early church is now in a dilemma. They, they, they followed the will of God. They done everything that God had orchestrated and told them to do. They proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 souls got saved, such as should be saved. Peter is now preaching and teaching the word of God. The Gentiles are being delivered. Blind eyes are being opened. And it seems as if everything was going right according to the will of God. But, but, but how many of you know that, that sometimes the will of God for your life or sometimes obeying the will of God can be a tricky business? And sometimes that there are loopholes. Sometimes that there are things you never planned for. Sometimes obeying the will of God seems like you're outside the will of God because sometimes if you really do the will of God, you find yourself asking the question like Jesus did on the cross, my God, my God. Why has thou forsaken? I'm talking about really going through some things and you just say, my God. You only get to the forsaken part. My God, what's wrong with these children? My God, what is wrong with these folks on my job? My God, it seems as if God is not there with you. Peter has done everything that, that, that God required him to do. He was the first apostle. He was the Catholic Church. Uh, 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 take Peter as being the first bishop of the Catholic Church. He establishes uh, the dominion. He establishes churches all throughout Asia, mind all throughout the world. Peter has established churches. And, and now we find, because Peter was so, 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 so diligent for the gospel, that now people are hating him. Uh, uh, the word gets out that there are some renegades running around town preaching about this Jesus person that they crucified. The world get the word gets around that there, there are people who are doing something that, that's in opposition to the Roman government. That the word gets out, and all of a sudden, because of doing the will of God, Peter now has an enemy. Uh, I'm gonna lose some of y'all this morning because some of y'all think your haters hate you because of the clothes you wear. I don't want people to hate on me because of the clothes I wear or because of the style of hair you have, but people ought to hate you because they're mad at the God that resides in you. There, there should be something about you that when you come around people without saying anything, they get irritated about the God that said you should be something on your life that people that used to hang with don't want to hang with you anymore because there's something different in your life. There should be something that irritates people. Just as much as ignorant people irritate you now, same folks should irritate ignorant folks. I think I'm lost, y'all. Uh, uh, just as much as people who talk foolishness should irritate you, so should your love of God irritate them. Peter has now irritated the rulers of the synagogues. Herod now is out to kill Peter. And, and Herod is not just making a threat. Because if you read the first chapter, first verse of the 12th chapter, he had already killed James. It's not really a threat unless they executed what they said they were going to do. Uh, it's not that he hadn't killed anybody. He killed James and told Peter, you're next. You're next. And, and, and that's the time right there that, that Peter's faith 
is now being checked because what do you do when you have stirred up so much opposition and people are coming to you and you see people falling off this doing what you do? Most people start to back away from it and say, nah, that's how y'all killing folks over this. I'll find something else to do. But, but now Peter, who had disappointed God once before, made up in his mind, I will not disappoint him again. I'm going to talk to some real folks right through here. And you know you've done some things in your season, in your life, and you've disappointed God. And you said, God, give me one more crack at it. I promise you I won't let you down this time. Yes, I messed up last time, but God, trust me one more again, as the old folks say. And I promise you I won't let you down. This is Peter's second chance to prove he's really who he said he is. Sometimes a second chance, and not just a second chance to get things. Sometimes God gives you a second chance to prove some things. Sometimes God gives you a second chance because you messed up the first chance and you disappointed God. And God said, I'm going to give you the same test to see if you pass it this time. And I'm talking to somebody here, and you ought to be glad that the test came back again because the tester did not owe you another chance. But glory be to God, even though I messed up the first time, he trusted me again. Look at time he trusts me again. He, he trusts me again. I, I messed up the first relationship, but he trusts me again. I made a mess of my old church, but he trusts me again. I messed up the last time I was in ministry, but he trusts me again. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself, but is there anybody in here that'll give God a little itsy bitsy praise because he trusted you again? I'm not asking you how you messed it up. I'm not asking you where you messed up, but aren't you glad that he trusts you again? He could have just skipped by you, went past you. He could have blew you off and said, nah, you messed up too bad the first time. But glory be to God for his grace and mercy that he trusts me again. I don't know what y'all waiting for to give God a praise because some of y'all owe God a praise right there. It's called a trust you again praise. I'm sorry. I said it's called a trust you again praise. Let me try it one more time. Some of y'all, oh God, I trust you again, praise. Because you messed up the first time. You denied his name. You cussed by the fire. You said you didn't know him. You went to work and act like a fool. But God, like Peter, trusts you again. He, he trusts Peter. Again, after failing him, he trusts Peter. Again, now, Peter's in trouble. The Bible says that Herod stretched out his hands and said, I'm going to kill all the Jews, and he already killed John. The Bible says he caught Peter and said, I'm going to kill him right after Easter. The Bible says he has Peter now locked up in prison, bound between two soldiers, chains on both hands. God's on the outside, and he is now in the inner prison. Uh, I want to talk to a couple of people here this morning. And if people would ask you what the problem is, it's not that you don't want to tell them, you just don't know where to start. It's, it's, and you wonder why I'm hesitating when you ask me what's going on, because I'm deciphering through my mind what is it that you really can handle. Because <laughs> you really don't want me to tell you what's really going on. So, so sometimes I gotta, I gotta go through my mind and, and ask myself, uh, what do they have the capacity to handle? Then I gotta ask myself, if I tell you what I'm going through, do you still think there's an anointing on my life? And, and then I gotta tell you, uh, ask myself, if I tell them, can I handle the responsibility that I gave them? Because once you know what I'm going through, you have a responsibility either to minister to me or talk about me. And I gotta ask myself, what can you handle? Because just like Peter, I'm in the middle of a whole lot of stuff. God, I wish I could preach to somebody in here and say, it ain't just one thing, it's a couple of things. And every time I turn around, it seems like something else going down. And you want to rub my back and fan me with a special soul funeral fan. The devil is a liar. I'm going through too much hell in my life with just some cute, easy, weasy prayer. But you say, I'm praying for you. But you know you're really not praying for me. But I'm in a season in my life that I'm between some stuff. Have you ever been between something, uh, between going or staying, between starting it or shutting it down? Uh, have you ever been in between a, a situation and, and the problem is you're bound on both sides? You 
ain't missing it. He, he's bound on both sides. Both sides have him locked down. I need to talk to some real people that you're bound in the middle of something and, and you're sitting there perplexed and ask yourself, how am I going to get out of this? Oh, God, have you ever asked yourself that question? How am I going to get out of this? I've wiggled my way out of some stuff, and I've talked my way out of other things, and I've brought my way out of some situations, but every now and then you will get in a predicament that you can't talk or wiggle your way out of. You sit there and ask yourself, how do I get out of this? I'm in bankruptcy and foreclosure. How do I get out of this? They got litigations and lawsuits. How do I get out of this? I got breast cancer and HIV. How do I get out of it? I need to talk to somebody that's in the middle of something. He's bound on, on both, both sides on you. He, he's bound by two chains. If it was a you, sir, I'll preach two chains. I'm different. Yes, I'm different. He's bound in the middle something he just can't lose himself from. Something in the text arrested my attention. The Bible says that he's bound between two soldiers sleep. He's bound between two soldiers with a threat of death on his life, but he's sleep. Let me say it again, Kay. Um, he's bound by two soldiers. The death of threat is looming over his head, but he's sleep. Can I tell you something? When you know Jesus for yourself, I don't care what bounds you, and I don't care what threat you're under, God will give you sweet sleep. I need to talk to somebody here to know what it is to be bound and perplexed, and you don't even know why you're able to sleep, and you don't even know why you haven't lost your mind, and you don't even know why you haven't blown your brains out yet. It's because God has given you peace. Is there anybody here that'll stop and give God a praise? Because even though I was bound by some things and shackled about some things. Uh, foreclosure was looming. Uh, bankruptcy was looming. Uh, charges was looming. Uh, debt was over top of my head, uh, but I still went to sleep. Uh, can you give God a praise? Because uh, even in the middle of your struggle, you still got a good night's sleep. My God, I feel like preaching. Touch your neighbor and tell him I slept through it. Now that was the wrong neighbor. Tell him I slept through it. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds irresponsible. But Tim, I slept through it because God gave me peace. What is man that I should fear? Because if God be for me. Oh my God. Y'all see that? See Ooh, that was a word for somebody right there. I don't know what you got to face tomorrow. I don't know whether you're getting furloughed or some question. I don't know whether you're getting sued or screwed. But just sleep through it. Just sleep through it. Just look at your hands and sleep through it. Why? Why are you worrying? about something that only God can handle. I need to talk to somebody right through here. I said, why are you tossing and turning, worrying about something that only God can handle? And God said, you can stay up all night if you want to. That's on you. But I'm going to give you the power to sleep through it. Because while you're sleeping, God is working it out. He sleep between two soldiers, Russell, bound by two chains. He said, Pastor, what can prayer do for you? He's, he's bound by two chains. The threat of death is looming over his head. It ain't just play death. You got, I know some people sell wolf tickets, you know. Uh, they tell them I'm going to beat you up in the parking lot. I'm going to beat you up in, in the sand. I'm going to beat you up at recess. Uh, they just talk and they ain't beat nobody else up. But it's different when the school bully done whip all your friends. Tell you 
you next? You got bubble gush, you can't even eat your, can't meet your uh, 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 potato tots at lunch. <laughs> and again, your tater tots away. You got <laughs> Just your turn on the jungle gym, you can't swim.